this topic, if I come to this topic, so this topic is microfinance and financial empowerment, last mile challenges and solutions. I know this is a very, uh, it's a topic which we can talk days and days together, but I know it's also difficult now, this session after the lunch, everybody must be feeling sleepy also. Anyway, I'll try to keep you, try my best to keep you awake. Uh, I don't want to deal with what we understand by microfinance. Everybody knows what is microfinance and what we understand about microfinance. That is, you know, the finance below 50,000 rupees. We also know the importance of financial inclusion. The whole day we have heard the various facets of financial inclusion, uh, whether you say from the developmental side, from the credit side, deposit side, whatever it is, you know, the exact meaning of financial inclusion. There are a lot of uh, studies made, a lot of debates have been made on this. So I will not go into all that. Uh, but one must, well, I must say that it is well recognized that MFIs or microfinance has played an important role in financial inclusion in our country. We also know that that uh, uh, Government of India and Reserve Bank of India has also acknowledged the role of MFIs in the financial If we look back that, you know, uh, how this microfinance started in our country, I will just touch upon it, just to recollect. You know that there are two channels of microfinance. One is SHG Bank Linkage, which has been, which is pioneered by NABARD. And there is another route, microfinance institution routes, MFI routes, who are doing a very important job in, micro, in financial inclusion or towards the micro credit. This microfinance institution movement uh, should be right from the initial stages have been working in this uh, area and have done a lot of job in the development of microfinance institution. Uh, we also know that In 2007-8 and 2008-9 and partly 10, there has been tremendous growth in the microfinance sector. And I don't want to repeat the, what was the cause of such growth, or everybody in this uh, hall knows about it. And what is the effect of it also we know in 2010, September, October, we had in one of the states, we had some crisis in that sense, there was a ordinance was passed to regulate the microfinance institutions. Then subsequently it was made into an act, which in fact, those ordinance and act has ultimately, instead of regulating the MFIs, have almost stopped the functioning of MFIs in that state. Accordingly, you know, there was consequently, we expected some contagion effect from that state to other states, which also, you know, uh, I would say that to some extent that would be stopped. There was not much contagion effect, but but the, there are certain effect has uh, caused to the sector, like the sector's credibility, credibility has been severely affected. Uh, it caused a lot of liquidity concerns. It also 
the financial support from bank and the institution also decreased. There were issues on delinquency as well as loan portfolio also had shrunk. These were the effects of that AP crisis. But as I have been saying at various platforms, there is a positive side also. There were negative effects, also there is a positive side that what I say is that the rule of the business have been put in place. Now all these days, these MFIs were never regulated, were not properly regulated. Now, some regulations are, we are seeing some regulations are coming into the uh, area. Like RBI has issued guidelines, directives, notifications, starting from definition of NBFC MFIs, then priority sector, fair practices code, relaxed provisioning norms, etc. These are to bring discipline to the sector. In fact, a lot of emphasis have been given on responsible lending practices. These are the positive side we should see, which is the outcome of the epic crisis. We also know that Mr. Uh, Alokji has also mentioned that microfinance bill has been uh, placed in the parliament and which is now with the standing committee and we hope that this bill will ultimately give a statutory framework for development, promotion and orderly growth of the MFIs. All this will in turn we are confident that this will give lot of you know will help in or facilitate financial inclusion. Similarly, uh, because uh, I had prepared a, a long presentation, but because of paucity of time, which I have now not presenting that, but I just wanted to, in my this thing, initial uh, speech, I just wanted to say few things that what has happened in the microfinance in the past, last two, three years, and what is the effect of it today, how MFIs are passing through, and there are certain concerns, issues, which I need to flag. Now today we are saying that number of MFIs today are facing uh, double crisis. That is, one is uh, the, uh, one is your, the, the um, liquidity, and the other is solvency. Now, there could be various reasons for this. One could be, you know, the limited funding from the banks and financial institutions. There are rising operational costs, low asset quality, and the portfolio size, the shrinking in the portfolio size. Um, even in the last years, uh, especially in uh, many of the states, including Bihar, we have seen that number of smaller MFIs have incurred losses and there is a problem of their continuing it. In fact, these are the issues which we need to look into and the uh, besides that there is another issue which I wanted to flag is that the cost part of it. Today in the previous sessions, uh, Mr. Verma has talked about the rate of interest, the cost to MFIs, some, uh, some of the speakers said some people are charging 30%, 40%. I don't think today any MFI is charging more than 25 to 26% because as per RBI guidelines, uh, no MFI can charge more than 26%. So if they are charging more than 26%, I don't think they will be termed as microfinance institution. They will be termed as something else, not microfinance institutions. And uh, what I was trying to say, this, you know, the regulations which has been brought in by the Reserve Bank has also a cost of compliance. In fact, Reserve Bank says that you need to be, 
you need to, you know, assess the borrower's income. You need to verify the indebtedness level of the poor people. All those things will carry the cost. So every today, when they come to this business, microfinance institution, they have a large cost. And this complying with RBI condition will add to their cost. So therefore, this is one of the issue we need to be very careful. And my uh, purpose of saying this is that, that today uh, we should be careful about the sustainability of the microfinance institutions. So in the financial inclusion, uh, microfinance institutions role, other speakers will say, I just wanted to, at this point of time, I wanted to flag certain issues. The role of microfinance institution, the need for microfinance institution for financial inclusion, and what are the issues they are facing today to take it forward. I would be, uh, I had many other points in the sense what Sidbi has done for Bihar in the financial inclusion area, and what we have plans to do. This, if any opportunity comes, I will be able to tell you. Thank you very much.